can we just talk about uh, where your general sense of the bull market is? Like, like, how are you feeling right now in terms of the sentiment on Twitter and how people kind of are thinking about where we are? Yeah, I mean, not much has changed uh, in the last week, um, except, you know, just the price action, really. But um, I mean, the bull market's just beginning, um, you know, one little leverage flush, uh, you know, a little people get a little excited, overextended uh, in derivative markets. That's that's nothing, uh, you know, fundamentally, nothing has changed with uh, the Bitcoin bull market. And I think we're right at the beginning. All right. So we're going to pull up uh, some of your slides here. We've got this Bitcoin long term holder supply. When you show this to people, I think they're going to say, wait a second, a long term holder supply is going down. What does that mean? So describe why long term holder supply is so important to pay attention to. And then this dip that we're starting to see, what is exactly is this telling us? Yeah. So, um, you know, Will has been covering this extensively. I've been paying a lot of attention to this and covering this myself. Um, and, and it's somewhat like counterintuitive in the sense that long-term holder supply drawing down is actually a, a sign of, of a bull market. Um, but, so basically, you know, when you're talking about a supply squeeze, a supply, a supply squeeze, we keep repeating it, right? On-chain analytics is like, you know, this is, this is what we're covering over and over again. And why is this driving the price action? Well, basically what you're, what you're doing, hodling, stacking, what it's doing is it's engineering a supply shock. And so um, that's basically the driver of every single bull market is there's there's a fundamental imbalance between supply and demand. There's a lot of you know new money coming in and they're having to to compete against basically uh, you know not a lot of the supply. So um, I you know a lot of these charts I put together um, I showed like a one month view and then I show like you know the entire history of Bitcoin. And right now we see uh, like basically four straight days, three straight days of of drawdowns in long term holder supply. And people might think that's bad, but really what you're seeing is that the long-term holders are engineering the supply squeeze. And then when the bull market comes and Bitcoin gets bid up, they'll take a little bit of profit off the table. They'll, you know, just a proportion of their holdings, uh, they distribute to, to, to new market participants and that's fine. Uh, but that, you know, that's kind of, you know, this, this is one of the telltale signs of the bull market kind of, kind of beginning. So when we look at the second chart you have here, it's still showing this long-term uh, holder supply, but I think this is really where, where you can see that as the long-term holder supply draws down, that's really where price kind of punches upwards uh, in the market. And, and I think this is what you're talking about with that long-term holder supply contracting a little bit actually signals the start of that kind of epic move upwards. Yeah, I mean, the, so the price action is almost like the, the spark of or, you know why they distribute the new holdings, right? Like you've accumulated during the bear, during consolidation and Bitcoin goes parabolic, you know, it, it's okay to take a little bit off the table. Um, you know, some people will hold forever, um, but you know, you know, if you see an asset that you hold go up 10,000%, 1,000%, you know, double, five X, whatever it is, um, you're gonna maybe take some take something off the table. So that's what you see here. Every time Bitcoin goes parabolic, um, just like it did, you know, when it went six X from September of last year to, you know, March or April, you saw long-term holder supply draw down basically the whole time and new market participants came in and, and basically, you know, acquired all that Bitcoin. And so now, you know, when we were talking last week or a couple of weeks ago, and every time Will comes on, he's talking about, and he's showing you these same charts and he's saying, Hey, like, look at, uh, we're seeing kind of like almost like a bear market dynamic where, where long-term holders are, are stacking, are stacking their butt off. And so, you know, now I think we're right at the beginning stages of this next parabolic advance where you're going to have, a, you know, a club, a demand of new money come in and they're just going to, you know, it's they don't have much to bid. They're going to have to bid reflexively in a small, super small uh, flow to, you know, free supply. And that's really what happened back in October, November, December and into Q1 of 2021, right, was that there was very little supply available that was kind of liquid. People came in, they were like, hey, I'll buy it at $12,000. No one was selling 15, 20, 25, 30. And we just ran all the way up to $64,000 because literally it took that much price movement. Or, or I, I like to think of it as like the US dollar price has to move upwards to accommodate everyone in terms of the new demand and then also unlocking, right? It, it's almost like, uh, you have an asset, you really like it, uh, and they're bidding on it, right? Literally, they're saying, I'll pay you a certain price. And Bitcoin is just like, I'm not selling. I'm not selling. And then eventually, they're like, okay, fine, I'll sell it to you at $64,000. Like, idiot, right? Right. And that's where they're actually going to go ahead and sell. But everyone has a different price that they'll do that at. Yeah, the Bitcoin price moves up when the marginal seller is exhausted. And I think that's that's the key. Um, you know, there's there's a few willing sellers in this market, and you can see it on chain. Um, you know, a couple million Bitcoin are, are basically being wash traded back and forth. And the people, these traders, you know, they'll they'll set limit orders, they'll they'll have you know market sells where they take some profit. Um, and there's obviously there's leverage on top of that. So, you know, when you're looking at certain price action, like just like the last couple of days, why is Bitcoin going down? I thought all time highs were broken. Well, you know, there's derivatives on top of that, which we'll, you know, we'll cover in a little bit. But you know, the fundamental driver of a bull market is you have the, the free flow of supply is has, you know, 
gone really, really thin, and you're having this new kind of club of demand come in. And so they have to just reflexively bid up the price of Bitcoin. And so when you see long-term holders start to distribute a little bit, that's fine. And that's just showing you that the new money's coming in and acquiring that, that supply. Bitcoin's changing hands. So we have this chart, the long-term and short-term holder on-chain cost basis. What is this showing us? Yeah, so the, the cool thing about um, you know on-chain analytics is we can see basically the average price of, of these cohorts. We can see the long-term holder, you know, basically cost basis, the price that they acquired their coins, and the short-term holder cost basis. So the short-term is the pink, and it's basically pretty. It follows price, you know, pretty closely. And the long-term holder supply is obviously lags a little bit. And you see, you see during bull markets, you see the short-term holder cost basis you know, get bid up huge while, while the long-term holder cost basis kind of stays flat or, I mean, rises marginally. Um, and so a bear market dynamic is when is when these two are converging upon each other and a bull market dynamic is when is when one kind of the short-term holder cost basis really, really, really gets bid. And so when you put these two in a ratio, you can kind of see over the, over the history of Bitcoin, you can see like a really interesting pattern uh, of, of bull and bear cycles um, based on on these two cost bases, uh, you know, for the, for the long-term and short-term holders. Got it. And then we've got a second visualization of kind of the same thing, this cost basis ratio. Uh, what, what is this showing us that's a little bit different from that first one? Yeah, so this is just the, the two in a ratio. And so the green uh, in this chart is essentially showing a bull market dynamic where, where these short term holders, the price of, of their, you know, uh, of their holdings is, is going up a lot because you have all this new money coming in, right? This is the dynamic we were talking about with the long term holders and the short term holders coming in and really trying the new money coming in and really trying to you know acquire their stake. Um, they're having to, to bid against each other competitively. And so the price of Bitcoin skyrockets, their average cost basis skyrockets. And you can see this with green, right? This is the, the green zones are when the short term holder cost basis is skyrocketing relative to the long term. And so, um, you know, conversely, when when the, there's this red zone here, that's when the long term cost basis is is creeping up against the short term. And so that's kind of like a consolidation or a bear market dynamic. And interestingly enough, the last couple of months over the course of the summer, we saw basically like an on-chain bear market, even though even though price action wasn't uh, well, you know, wasn't too bearish over the last couple of months. You saw just basically this is showing like a massive accumulation um, uh, by convicted long-term holders. And so now we're just now like a couple of days ago, we kind of this ratio turned up uh, and is actually now it's like you can think of it as green. So we're in this I think we're in the beginning stages of the bull market and a lot of the stuff we look at on-chain it, it, you know, is saying the same thing. And this fifth slide is this is just uh, zoomed in a little bit right there on uh, on the kind of that turn up in that green uh, signal. Yeah, so this is just like the really up close uh, version of it. And so we can kind of see that that ratio is just starting to turn a little bit. So so I kind of think of this as the reflexive kind of uh, parabolic phase of the bull market uh, is just starting up. We uh, we just kind of entered that entered that zone. Yeah, it, it's incredible to kind of just see how clearly you can uh, you can identify this with the on chain metrics.